So in this Fallout 76 video, I'm going to be showing you all something that you might have not known about. This was added back in the One Wasteland for All update. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how we can convince Initiate Dodge to go to Fort Atlas to connect with the Brotherhood of Steel that arrived in Appalachia. I'm also going to be showing you what happens when he does get over to Fort Atlas, as well as some unique dialogue that you might have not heard before. So yeah, hope you all find this enjoyable and you learn something new from this. Let's get into all of this now. First things first, there is this side quest that was added in the update One Wasteland for All to introduce us to Daily Ops, which you've probably done this side quest before because it's literally triggered by just entering the cranberry bog after that update but there are some pretty unique options that i'll be showing you that you can choose from within this that you might have passed up and didn't know about in the beginning of it we can choose to go read this note that's at the bus stop or we can just head on over to vernon dodge and the watoga towers but this note kind of helps introduce the character a bit more before even meeting him. As you can see, this note's called Prove Your Worth, and it reads, Want to prove your worth and honor to the Brotherhood of Steel? Meet me at Watoga Towers. If you're just a raider looking for trouble, think twice. This one didn't. Initiate Vernon Dodge, Brotherhood of Steel. And yeah, at this bus stop here, it seems like a bunch of raiders met with a terrible fate because of Vernon Dodge, which I think the developers added this scenario here to, for one, help us locate where he's at, and for two, to kind of introduce the character's toughness before even meeting him. This guy doesn't seem like a guy to mess with. But yeah, speaking of meeting him, now we know from that note, we gotta go over to the Watoga Towers to find him. And he's not far whatsoever from this bus stop. We're just gonna have to go into the elevator at the Watoga Towers and head to the third floor, which the elevator will be located right here. Anyways, yeah, once we're in here, Vernon Dodge will be in this room, as you can see. Hmm. Let's have a look at you. And he is really settled in here. There are loads of junk items in here that we can loot for scrap. Or maybe something you want to put on display in your camp or something. There are plenty of junk items here to loot, but yeah, let's go ahead and interact with them now. Yeah. All right. You'll have to do. So yeah, we get a few dialogue options here to say to him. We can say, uh, what? Or if we have intelligence one and lower, which I purposely have on this build, just to show you this unique dialogue option, we can say, oh boy, what do I win? Or we can say, whoa, forget it, bye. Or lastly, if we have strength 10 and higher, we can say, what the heck are you looking at, old man? But yeah, let's go ahead and go with this option here because I feel like this is one I think many players haven't heard the response of before. And that is this one. Oh boy, what do I win? Yeah, luckily I'm not looking for the brightest. It's the bravest. Wow. I'm an issue Dodge with the Appalachian chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. I got word that members from Mariposa are on their way here now. It's critical that I lay the groundwork they need to get a foothold in this region. Are you up for it? So yeah, let's just go ahead and say, I'm able to help, what do you need? This is when Initiate Dodge will introduce us to Daily Ops. This is the guy who's in charge of the Daily Ops and talks to us while we're doing them. I'm just going to go ahead and skip this dialogue here and get into the next part, which is, as you can see, complete a Daily Op from your map. So yeah, I'll get back to you all once I complete this Daily Op. Alright, so I completed the Daily Op. Now, I just have to go and talk to him again, and this will actually complete this side quest called Breaking Radio Silence to, once again, help introduce Daily Ops. We don't have to necessarily do this quest to be able to do Daily Ops. This is just something extra Bethesda added into the game to give a little introduction over the activity. Anyways, as long as we have progressed to the field testing quest that's a part of the Steel Dawn quest line, there will be a new dialogue option that will become available to say to him. This is a little secret Bethesda decided to add in with Initiate Dodge. As you can see, this Brotherhood dialogue option becomes available to say to him. We can say, the group from California is here. They are at Atlas Observatory. And here's how he responds. Atlas Observatory, huh? Interesting. And considered that. He must know something I don't. That doesn't change my plans, though. Supporting the Brotherhood with daily ops is still of the utmost importance. Now let's go ahead and say to him, you should join them at Atlas. They can use your knowledge. A deserter like me doesn't deserve to just stroll up and pretend all is forgiven. I'll face my redemption in exile. So as you heard, he talks slowly about himself being a deserter. 
And then we can choose from these dialogue options here saying, okay, fine. Or if we have strength 15 and higher, we can say coward. You're just afraid to own up to your mistakes. Or if we have charisma 10 and higher, we can say, look, we've all got our past, but you'll be more help to them in person. They need you. Now, in order to convince him to return to Fort Atlas, we're gonna have to choose the strength 15 and higher option or the charisma 10 and higher option. Or we can learn about his story and why he calls himself a deserter and get another option that doesn't have a special requirement. All we need to do is just learn about his story on why he calls himself a deserter. And we can do that by, instead of choosing the option letting him know that the Brotherhood is here, we just wanna go down and choose this one. I'd like to know more about you, Initiate Dodge. Fine, but only since you came through for me. What exactly are you dying to know? And then we just wanna choose this option here. What's the real story behind you deserting? Real story is that I was a naive fool. I left my post, let the Brotherhood down, came back to more fallen comrades than I could count. Now there are a few options that we can choose from here and still get to know his story. Let's go ahead and just choose this option here that requires 10 and higher luck. What happened? Did you just get lost one day? No, I, uh, well, well, shit, sorta. A little more complicated than that, but, uh, where to start? Well, I was already a geezer when I joined up. Despite my years in the service, the Brotherhood ran me through the ringer with the rookies. The younger guys. Looked up to me, I guess. I had a soft spot for that youthful spirit. My superiors, though, like Senior Knight Wilson, they, uh, look. The work the Brotherhood does, it's not easy not safe. You need to harden these kids into solid steel to endure the dangers of it. So, yeah, now let's go ahead and just say, sounds pretty rough. It was rough. Nothing I couldn't shrug off, but the younger recruits were bending too far and sometimes snapping. One kid, he... <sighs> Damn it. Sorry. One kid got a lot more stick than Carrot. Broke him. Went AWOL in the middle of the night. The old fool I am saw it as my duty to chase him down before anyone like Wilson took notice. At the time I caught the kid, we were a day out. Completely lost our bearing. We got waylaid by a group of passing raiders. Guess they saw us as fit enough for their fighting pits weak enough to get the drop on him. So yeah, that's why he considers himself a deserter. Now let's go ahead and say this. You were just trying to help that recruit. That's hardly deserting. I abandoned my post all the same. Should have told Wilson right away instead of running off like some foolish hero. Spent the next decade or so slitting throats, caving in skulls, and doing anything I could not to be a corpse on the arena floor. Lost an eye. Lost the kid, too. That was a long, hard life to live. That is, until my latest handler brought me to the Watoga Civic Center fight pits. The smell of being so close to home got my blood boiling. Strangled the poor bastard with one of those collars, then... ran like hell. I took a bullet from a search party, but I've been free of them since. Now I've just been limping around, looking for any Brotherhood tech I can fix. Trying to make things right with a bunch of ghosts. Well, I still can. Yeah, but that's enough of the past. Uh, hope you heard what you wanted. Leave me be for a spell, would you? Yeah, as you heard, he has a pretty brutal story. Now, since we know why he deserted for that recruit, Let's go ahead and talk to him again and let him know that the Brotherhood is here. And as you can see now, we've got this option here. You told me your story, Vernon. You are no deserter. You would be invaluable to Atlas. Let's go ahead and say this to him. Think so, huh? Well, I guess, uh, I guess they could use the knowledge rattling around this skull of mine. <laughs> Fine. Now pack up and head over soon. Oh, and, um... Thanks. So yeah, that's a way you can get him to go to Fort Atlas without the special requirements. 
Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and now return to Fort Atlas and see what all happens when he's there. Alright, so I'm back inside Fort Atlas here. We can find Initiate Dodge somewhere in this main room here. And you may notice immediately he's wearing a different outfit than what he was wearing before. Before he was wearing a ghillie suit up in Watoga Towers, and now he's wearing a special ops suit that we can get as a random reward from doing the daily ops. Thought that was pretty neat, but yeah, let's go ahead and see what he has to say when being here. Night Shin was looking at me again, wasn't he? You tell him I already took a bath a few days ago. That kid needs to get off my back. There's more important things than cleanliness right now. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of dialogue options we can choose from here with him. Now this first one goes over more about the daily ops, so I'm not going to be choosing that one. I'm actually going to be starting off with this dialogue option here. Are you settling in? Well, <clears throat> it's taking some time. It's been a while since I've been surrounded by people who weren't looking to kill me in my sleep. Yeah, the scars I got from those fighting pits are more than skin deep, but uh, yeah, I'm starting to adapt. Thanks for asking. It seems like he's settling in just fine here, especially compared to his past. Anyways, let's go with this next option here. Let's ask him, how does the Expeditionary Force compare to the Appalachian Chapter? Well, this group operates plenty different from the Appalachian Brotherhood. A lot more talk about the ideological aspects of the organization. No matter which side of it they're standing on, we were fighting for survival at nearly every turn. It wasn't raiders, it was scorched. Didn't have time for doctrine, at least not in my rank. It was a hell of a lot safer surrounded by these folk, though. Glad they're on my side. So it definitely seems all around better for him here. Anyways, let's go ahead and ask him this. What are your thoughts about the members here? Scribe Valdez is sharp. She just might be the pillar holding this whole thing up. Cooler heads only prevail when you've actually got a cool head around. Paladin Romani is charismatic. I was a bit put off at first. Felt like it was all for show. Didn't take long to see her conviction is the real deal. Night Shin is... <laughs> well, he reminds me of some people I served with back in the day. Couldn't say I liked those people, but I was glad to have them watching my back. Even if they were only watching so they could nag. So yeah, that's his thoughts over Scribe Valdez, Paladin Romani, and Knight Shin. Now let's go ahead and ask him this. Any thoughts on the dispute between Romani and Shin? I don't envy where you stand. One foot on land, the other on a boat setting out to sea. Do you hop on? Trust your captain to lead you right? Or stand firm on the land you know? Now, one thing's for sure. If you don't decide, your ass will be in the water before you know it. Think carefully going forward. That's all I can say. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Anyways, we can also say I like the new look. And here's what he says when we say that. Thanks. Keep working your ass off on those daily ops and maybe I'll throw a set your way. Uh, just so you know, the eye patch isn't included. <laughs> That's pretty cool. A little nod to his outfit being a reward from the daily ops. However, as you heard, the eye patch isn't something you can get. You too. Stay safe out there. Anyways, yeah, so that's all the responses from him with both Paladin Romani and Knight Shin alive. Now let's go ahead and check out what Scribe Valdez has to say about him. Since he brought up her, let's see what she has to say about him. Okay, so sweet, there is a dialogue option. We can choose from. As you can see, we can ask her, have you gotten to speak with Dodge from the West Virginia Brotherhood? Mm, yes. He's quite the interesting guy. He really familiarized himself with the proprietary tech that the West Virginia chapter developed. He's been an excellent source for archiving their research. I'm glad we could give him a safe place to stay after all that he's been through. So... From Scribe Valdez, it seems like, you know, this guy knows his stuff and is beneficial to this place. Now, let's go ahead and see what Knight Shin has to say about him being here. Remind, are you following your regiment? Okay, so we can ask him, have you met Initiate Dodge yet? You mean that slovenly deserter you decided to send to our doorstep? Yes, 
I've had the pleasure. If he sticks to playing around with those radios and stays out of the way, I won't object to him being here. And as long as he pitches in on bathroom duty, like everyone else. Alright, so it seems Night Shin does think of him as a deserter, but has no problem with him being here, as long as he just continues to do his work and stays out of the way. And I'm sure over time, maybe Initiate Dodge could earn Night Shin's respect. Possibly, I should say. Anyways, now let's go ahead and see what Paladin Romani says over him being here. We're here to stay. Do you have any questions about your duties? So, we we're able to say, looks like Initiate Dodge is settling in. Let's see what she says about that. Indeed. I have to thank you for sending him our way. I had always hoped a survivor from the original crew held out. It's quite the honor to meet him. He wasn't exactly high-ranking, but he's already offered valuable insight into how the West Virginia chapter survived here as long as they did. It wouldn't be appropriate to involve him in current affairs, but supporting his daily operations will be of great use to us. So, it seems overall Paladin Romani has nothing but good to say about him, and thinks he's very beneficial being here. But, yeah, I guess I'll start wrapping up this video, everybody. Hopefully you found this enjoyable and you learned something new from this. I'm out of here, though. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Peace.